What is up guys? Welcome back to some more Black Hat Python. The last video, we created this sniffer here. Now we're going to take it a step further, right? Because ultimately we want to actually be able to do something with the data that we have coming in. Now, if you remember here from this line, we're grabbing the IP header, right? The header of the uh, actual network packet. And uh, we want to actually extract certain fields of information from that binary uh, data. So that is what we're going to be working with in this video. Now, before we actually write our decoder script, there's a lot of prerequisite knowledge that uh, you just have to understand in order for any of this to make sense to you. So that is what I will dedicate this video to. So really, the first thing that we need to understand here is uh, how are we actually going to take that binary data and get uh, fields out of it, get information out of it, right? And actually categorize that, right? So there's two ways we can do this in Python. One is with the C types module and the other way is with the struct module. Now, which method you use is entirely up to you. What I'm going to be using in this video is the struct module because I noticed that in the example of the decoder Python script here, they do use the struct module. But yeah, C types is important to understand anyways, right? It's a foreign library for Python. I'll zoom in a bit here if I possibly can. Let's see, I know I can, I just gotta do it through here. Awesome. So yep, uh, basically it provides C compatible data types. It's kind of bridging the gap between Python and C really, because you can actually call C functions, DLL shared libraries, right? Uh, and you can wrap these libraries in pure Python. So a great way to actually get access to some of these like kernel level drivers and things like that you would normally call through the uh, through a C program. You can actually do that with Python using the C types library. So this is definitely a candidate for how we can uh, accomplish what we want to accomplish here. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to be actually using struct instead. And so struct is uh, another library, which more generally just allows you to uh, use packed binary data, right? Interpret bytes as packed binary data. And uh, you can give C struct, right? So this one is a little bit more general in what it can do, I guess you could say. But it, it has what are called, uh, you know, these special characters here, basically. Um, format characters, right? So what we'll be using is this character here for uh, little Endian. If you're familiar at all with uh, Linux and these operating systems, they're often uh, representing things in little Endian format. So we can specify that with this character here. If it were big Endian, it'd be the other way around, right? And we have some other options here as well. Ah, yeah. So now for these characters here, uh, the, these are actually the for, uh, format characters that... Uh, another set of format characters that you'll be seeing, right? Uh, and you'll see later on this B character, this H, and this just corresponds to different C types, right? So if we were using the C types library, <clears throat> we wouldn't use these here. We would just say unsigned char, how many, like what the width of it is, how many bytes, right? And uh, yeah, if you, if you want to really dive into the C type example, uh, definitely check out this book, Black Hat Python, for sure. <clears throat> they'll they'll cover all of that, but uh, don't worry too much about this right now. Just know that like if you put these letters in the code, right, it will correspond to these different types, right? This is the C type. This is the Python type. Because remember, Python doesn't really have signed and unsigned integers. It just has a generic integer, right? So we're actually using types from the C programming language so that we can interact with this binary data. So that's just uh, some of the stuff they can do, right? Because remember before we saw data like this and hexadecimal corresponding to the header, we're going to actually use the struct library to actually unpack that, make some sense out of this data, start grabbing the fields that we want from the data, right? Categorizing it. And yeah, that's pretty much what we're going to do here. Uh, not in this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to actually just set up the, uh, the class, the IP class for uh, unpacking, this, unpacking this struct here, like uh, the binary data. So first thing I will do is, let's just say that we go to the decoder 
I think decoder.py is what we could call it. So if I touch decoder.py, I have that file and we'll go there as well. So a couple imports we're going to need to kick off here. I'm going to go ahead and import everything that I need up front. Not all of this will be explained in this video, but once we get to the next one and we complete this program, then we'll have a overall bigger picture understanding of everything. We're going to just focus on the part that I was explaining earlier in this video, right? How to use struct to actually pull that binary data, categorize it, grab what we want reliably. So that's why we're importing struct here and we'll import this as well. And so now that our imports are out of the way, we're going to create a class called IP and uh, we're going to give it an initialize, you know, initialize it <clears throat> with uh, passing in self and then buff equals none. We're just setting the buffer to none. And now we will define the header, right? Because we're grabbing in the header in uh, with the previous program, right? So that is going to be in our struct. We're going to want to unpack that. And now we got to give it these codes, the codes I was talking about earlier. We're actually going to do that in this video. I kind of lied there. We're going to do it here using these format characters because there's a certain uh, way that the IPv4 packets look like. I guess I should bring this to light as well, right? So this is a overview of what the IPv, uh, IPv4 packet actually looks like, right? So the first, you know, three bits, right? The uh, version right? Then the, eight, uh, the header length, the length of the header, right? The type of service, and then the total length, right? Then identification, flags, fragment offset, time to live, protocol, header checksum, source IP address, destination IP address, and options, which I believe this might be an optional part, this options here. But as you see here, this is the format of every single IPv4 packet. So we know what the structure of the overall binary data, like how it's going to be organized, right? So, and we also know how many bits correspond to each thing, right? So because of that, we can easily choose format characters that will line up with this so that we can actually categorize the data correctly and grab what we want. So we're going to unpack. And now here's where the format characters come into play. We're going to do this character to say, hey, this is in little endian format, right? And then this is what uh, it will be for an IPv4 packet. Now, this is something you can simply memorize or write in your notes, I guess I would say. But uh, yeah, we'll see how this corresponds to it. But this is what it's going to look like. And then buffer, right? Buff. And uh, so with that being said, right, if we go back to what we were looking at earlier, we have two unsigned chars, right? And then we follow that up with four unsigned shorts. And then 4S, which is a single character, right? So we're just saying, hey, four, four character, four, four bit characters, I, I believe is what it is. And then uh, another four bit character or four bit string. String, really, right? Because in C, there is no string variable. A string is simply an array of chars. So that's why you see char here with the brackets, because that's one distinction about uh, C. There's no string, it's just a character array. So, yeah, an array of four characters, I believe. And uh, from there, you know, this is going to be the format. So we're going to say, hey, unpack it in this format. And now we'll start defining the different actual uh, chunks of this as binary data and where it's going to be. Because we know, remember, we know because of this, we know what corresponds to what. So that's how we're going to actually assign it to certain variables so we can store that and call upon it when we need it, right? So first thing we'll do is say version or self.ver, right? And that will be the very first header zero, right? And so if we go here, remember version is going to be at the very beginning, the first four 
uh, the first four bits, right? From zero to three. And then the next one will be IHL, which will correspond to the header length. And so, so on and so forth, right? Now this one here, you have 0xf, and with this, we have, uh, that's the very beginning, right? Now the rest of these we'll put down here. So we have the, let's see, TOS, which is type of service, and so on. So these ones here are just kind of uh, metadata, if you will. I suppose so are, so are these as well, right? But we're going to put the type of service down here, and that's going to be in the header position one. That's the way that it's actually pieced together in the in the binary data, right? It's actually these these were both kind of at the same uh, position on the header, which is header zero, zero indexed, right? And now when you go to the one index, the rest of these are pretty standard. So that's just something you got to remember, right? These first two, the version and the header length are both in the same uh, position zero here. So that's why we use these extra things here, I believe, to really pick apart wh where it's at. But then for the rest of these, it's pretty standard as to where they actually lie. So this one, header two, and perhaps easiest way is if I copy this, let's say. ID is next, that's in three, offset. And now I'm just, I'm basically just going down the line. I don't want to click back and forth constantly, but you get it right. This is the fragment offset, time to live protocol, header checksum, source IP, destination IP. And we're not even going to bother with options in this case. So I'm just going to complete this here. And uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I'm complete. And yeah, we're finally complete <laughs> with that at this point. And as you see here, there are, well, I guess really 11 different uh, variables that we've created here corresponding to, once again, everything that we see here, except for options, right? So IP source, IP destination, all that. So... That's pretty much all I want to do for this one is setting this up. Now, we're not even done creating the IP class. Uh, there's a little bit more code we're going to need to add to that, quite a bit more. So we'll, we'll do that in the next one. But now you see basically how you can use the struct library, library to, uh, to set up um, this based off the binary data. And the nice thing is that, I mean, this is just based off the IPv4 header. Uh, IPv4 packets, right? So anytime you're working with IPv4, you could pretty much copy this code here and reuse it. You won't have to think about how do I unpack the struct? How do I set up the, uh, the struct? You can pretty much use this every single time. It's a very common scenario here. So hopefully this video was of help to you guys. Prerequisite knowledge. We'll be going right back into this, completing this program and of course demoing it out in the next video. And uh, yeah, if you want to catch up on this playlist, go ahead and check out the videos on screen now, Black Hat Python. I'll see you guys right over there, actually. Thanks for watching.